Aikido was created by founder Morihei Ueshiba. Ueshiba sensei used to say that Aikido was created to lead Japanese martial arts in the right direction. This is certainly true. Aikido represents a major departure from its predecessor arts that focused exclusively on winning or defeating an opponent. It was created as an art to foster moral character. It is natural that the way to present Aikido techniques differs greatly from that of other martial arts. It goes without saying that Aikido techniques are highly complex and sophisticated. The case is very different from Judo and Karate, martial arts that I once studied. I first began my study of Aikido nearly 50 years ago. About 10 years ago, certain people in the world of Japanese martial arts began to doubt that Aikido was a martial art. This was only natural because people at that time blindly followed the same training practice of their younger days. This has been a cause of concern for me because if we continue to train in the same way as before, these criticisms will someday reflect reality and Aikido will cease to be a martial art. This doubt concerning Aikido about the martial nature of the art can be heard often both in Japan and abroad. But from that time, we have done our best to convey the words of O-sensei to present-day practitioners and exemplify these principles in our own practice. O-sensei often said, Aikido includes not only empty-handed techniques, but also the sword and stick, that is, the ken and jo. There are techniques for every possible situation. It is important to keep this in mind. We have always stressed this principle in our training. Thus, in our Aikido practice, we always train to be able immediately to use the Ken or Jo to go from any technique according to the individual situation. In this video, we will demonstrate our everyday training. Our training will be different from the kind of practice normally seen. After executing a basic empty-handed technique, we always practice a related technique with the Ken and Jo. I would like you to observe how we practice. If after viewing this video, you don't find our approach worthwhile, you can disregard it. If on the other hand, you find it suitable, then please follow our method of Aikido practice. I would now like to explain Aikido Shomenuchi techniques. Empty-handed Aikido techniques are based on the principles of the Ken or sword. However, recently, a number of instructors have expressed the opinion that practice of the Ken and Jo are unnecessary in Aikido training and that the art only involves empty-handed techniques. Aikido is based on the Ken. There are those who do not know how to draw or pin with the Ken. In fact, there are many instructors who don't even know how to grip the sword properly. If Aikido is a Budo, I would like to explain what Budo is to those who are unaware of the essence of the Ken, which is the very symbol of martial arts. Today, I would like to explain how Aikido is a Budo using the example of my Shomenuchi techniques. We will now begin Shomenuchi practice. Before our everyday training, we begin our practice with these kinds of preparatory exercises.
I would like to begin with this exercise. Then we have this turning and entering kaiten movement. Next follows this exercise involving a backward fall. Since Aikido is a Budo, there are martial arts applications to this movement. There are these atemi, or striking applications. Then there is this movement. This is an application. And you have this movement. You have atemi in all of these places. Now we will start with shomenuchi shihonage. Naturally, there is also a big difference between our way of practicing shomenuchi shihonage and the way it is generally done. We do shihonage like this. At this point, I have already entered. The usual way of doing it is like this, where you first parry his attack and then grab his wrist. One other explanation is that you initiate the movement, then parry his hand, and grab. This is not acceptable as a martial technique. Because when you parry him here, he will attack with his other hand. You don't know how many times he will punch. So we execute this strike before parrying his attack. Then this is our second strike. This is the way we practice shihonage. We deal with the attack using a kino nagare movement. This is how we execute the aikido shihonage. We absolutely do not touch the opponent's ken. An instant before the opponent comes, I control him. If you execute the form, perhaps it will look like this. It is too late to wait for your opponent to raise and lower his sword. This is too slow. You have to have already controlled your opponent when he raises his sword. The range of movement of the sword is up to here. The sword becomes a weapon for killing when it comes down. That is the situation. In our way of performing the technique, the encounter is already over when the opponent raises his sword. So this is how we enter. This is how we move. Entering like this. It is exactly the same principle for the Joe.
Since this is a jō, there is no blade. It is not capable of cutting. So as soon as he attacks, we enter to strike the jaw. We strike the jaw. Then we strike the knee. Then here. He raises his ken. We strike his jaw. Then his knee and the side of the head. This is the technique. Now we will do Shomenuchi Ikkyo Omote. Here too, the way Shomenuchi was done in the past and our way of doing it are very different. I would like to explain and demonstrate the technique. This is how we execute Ikkyo Omote. This is how it is done generally. They open and enter like this. This is a good way of doing it, but I think there are people who step forward this way. This is very dangerous. At present, the technique is often done this way, especially in executing empty-handed techniques. Practice which ignores the possibility of punches and kicks is not of value. So in our way of executing this technique, we treat the attack as if it were a punch. So we already have to have entered here when the opponent's body comes. Of course, he cannot reach me with either hand. This is the way irimi is done. This is the way it is done from the front angle. So when he punches, we enter like this. In a real situation, we would do this. Then we strike here. This is our method of training. Naturally, this can be directly applied to the Ken and Jo. Aikido techniques, as I mentioned before, can be adapted to the Ken and Jo. You must be able to use whatever weapon you have, be it a Ken or Jo. Aikido must encompass all forms of Budo to be authentic. Once again, Shomenuchi. This is how we execute the movement.
Next, we will move on to Ikkyo Ura techniques. This is how the technique is usually done. Once again, it is usually done like this. Here again, this is dangerous. So we do it from this position. We can at any time execute these atemi. So we enter like this. So we execute this technique like this. This is the form. In the case of a punch, naturally, we execute an atemi here. We can't enter from this position, so we enter like this. In this case, while entering like this, we can execute a strike from this position. We do it this way. Once again. Next, I will present Shomenuchi Gokyo. There are many problems with this technique as well. 
This is not just the case with Aikido, but with all martial arts. The problem of pairing and attack crops up everywhere. In karate, it is called gasho uke. We do not do it that way. I would like to explain this and demonstrate gokyo now. This is how we execute Gokyo. The opponent comes to strike our head, we stop his attack, then from this position we come here. When he attacks we already have moved to here, then we strike and then move here. Here too, the usual way of executing this technique is to extend your hand to parry the attack here. That is a big mistake. They parry the attack here and then enter. It's similar to the gasho uke block of karate I mentioned earlier. Naturally, if you bring both hands here, he will come with a punch like this. This is unacceptable from the standpoint of modern martial arts. So our method is to control our opponent here. Next we strike, and then we enter. This is how we do it. Here is an application of the movement. At this point, we control our opponent. Once again. This is a situation where we have reacted too slowly. That's how we do it. We'll now demonstrate the movement using the ken.
We will now demonstrate Shomenuchi Irimi techniques. Usually, this Irimi is divided into three ways of entering from the right side. We will show one movement from the first group of the Irimi techniques. We will also execute several applications. To briefly explain this irimi, here we enter this way, once again, one, two, we lead his arm this way, he attacks this way, we lead his arm this way, and throw. Once again, we enter this way. In this application, in Aikido, we don't grab the attacking hand at all. In normal training, we don't do this. But we execute techniques in such a way that we can at any time. In any event, this is the way we train. Please observe. Do you understand? I apply the pressure here. The lock I showed a moment ago is done this way. You enter here and lock your opponent. Both locks are applied by blending with the attack. This was the first technique of the third group of Shomenuchi techniques. Now let's move on to Shomenuchi Kotegaishi. There are about three kinds of Kotegaishi techniques from Shomenuchi that we practice, and I'll now show one of them. That was the basic movement. Now let's do the next technique. <clears throat> we'll change the attack to a punch. In the case of Shomenuchi, We entered like this. In the technique from a punch, we do it like this. We do it this way against a punch. We use a reverse strike. That's how we handle this attack. In sports, that sort of thing is naturally prohibited because it's not a place you can strike. You can't toughen up that part of the body. However, from the martial arts standpoint, it is the natural thing to follow through completely with the technique. 
So here we use this strike. We do it this way and come here. This is the way the technique is done. This is the basic form. This is the first kotegaishi form. There are also techniques using the ken and jo. I would now like to briefly explain nagewaza or throwing techniques. Of course, the way of throwing in Aikido is different from that of Judo. Why is this the case? The Judo way of throwing, which was developed by the Budo world, cannot be used in Aikido. In Aikido especially, the opponent is unbounced through the use of atemi. In the old days, in a real fighting situation, it was extremely difficult to defeat an opponent with a throw. At the beginning of the Meiji era in Asakusa, two judo practitioners got into a quarrel with many street toughs. What happened in that fight? The first and last opponents were thrown while all of the others were dispatched with atemi. If we didn't use atemi, we couldn't handle multiple adversaries. This is especially the case if the opponent has a bladed weapon, like a knife. Therefore, atemi are extremely important in throwing and pinning an opponent. Of course, in Aikido, there are many throws and pins, especially pinning movements. If we say that 60% of Aikido is pinning and 40% throwing techniques, then atemi are used in all of them. I will now give a brief explanation of two methods. We do it this way. 
In an actual situation, these are atemi. We can execute atemi at these points. Here is an atemi. You enter like this and then enter. This is an atemi. This is how you execute atemi. You execute atemi at these three points. You use three atemi. That is the way it is done. So, we do it this way. Next, we have this application. This is also an atemi. You have these atemi. We strike the opponent here and here. You unbalance your opponent using these atemi. This is how we execute the technique. Therefore, it is important to be sure to master these atemi techniques. I think that these techniques are, after all, necessary for martial artists. Once again, I have given you a brief explanation of these techniques using atemi.